Welcome back. The title of this mini lecture is Race, Sport, and Jackie Robinson. And we're going to talk about five terms that as you go to learn more about the interconnection between race and sport in America in the first half of the 20th century, uh, you should kind of focus in on these terms to kind of get a sense of really what was going on for those who lived at the time. So the first term for us here is going to be Al Spaulding's tour. So baseball grows in popularity in America after its sort of initial birth, 18, late 1840s, 1850s, into 1860s in the Civil War. And there's a lot of contributing factors as to why that happens when it happens. But once it does happen, you're going to start to see a, an explosion, really, of the popularity of baseball both in this country and around the Americas, uh, generally in the 1860s and 70s and 80s and 90s, to the point where by the end of the 19th century, you've got a, a really fascinating baseball culture that existed across Latin America, uh, particularly in Mexico, but especially in Cuba. And you have this feeling at the end of the 19th century, this era of imperialism, that white nations, in a sense, you know, you have this feeling amongst some white individuals that they should kind of take sort of aspects of their culture sort of global. And baseball was a good sort of example of that. And Al Spaulding, who was an, an integral figure in the popularity and primacy of baseball, especially in urban environments in the second half of the 19th century in the U.S., does this. Uh, gets a number of players, takes them on this world tour, and really kind of promoting whiteness through baseball and in many ways connecting aspects of, of race here. Now this is of course coming at the time that you have the formations of the major leagues, the owners coming to this understanding that they're going to you know, sort of uh, collectively agree not to uh, bring black players in. And by the early 20th century, right, this of course will result in the formation of the Negro Leagues. Uh, now this particular uh, series of teams uh, for African-American players are really, really integral to understanding uh, the growth and development of, of sport in the black community uh, in the first half of the 20th century, especially in places like Pittsburgh, where the Homestead Grays are, uh, in parts of Kansas City, where the Monarchs play, uh, in New York and in Chicago. You know, you've got this really wonderful uh, sort of baseball culture here, but of course it's born out of uh, of segregation. It's born out of an era of whiteness. It's born out of an era that, that you know, kind of places a, a primacy on, on white supremacy and that black players uh, aren't to play, aren't allowed to play in the, the major leagues. And this, is, this is for whites only. Now, the, the third term for us uh, is going to be the Bob Feller Satchel Page Tour. So it's the climate really of World War II and especially right after that you're going to start to really across aspects of American society begin to see direct challenges to aspects of the racialized status quo that was defended during World War II and existed for generations before it. And in the aftermath of the war, you know, this is going to be put on display, of course, through platforms like sport, uh, but also, of course, many others, such as, for example, President Truman's uh, integration of the uh, order to integrate the, the U.S. military, uh, and of course the many rights struggles of the 1950s and the work that uh, black women as as activists and advocates did uh, for the NAACP in the mid 1940s as, as well. Well, you have this tour, this sort of all star baseball tour, bringing in uh, African American players uh, under uh, Satchel Paige, who's this this wonderful pitcher. Uh, against white players, uh, led by Bob Feller, uh, and the sort of all-stars kind of coming together. Uh, and it was, you know, a process that existed, uh, you know, 1945, 46, you know, sort of right after the war was was over, really, at this, this climate or this time, uh, where, you know, these, these questions were sort of beginning to, uh, sort of, challenges beginning to happen. And the idea of going on tour, winter tours, uh, wasn't new. Uh, these kinds of barnstorming tours, in, in many ways, were connected back to 
the earliest days of professionalization of, of the major leagues and of, of baseball overall. A, a fourth term for us is going to be Branch Rickey. Uh, so Branch Rickey is the administrator uh, who is the, uh, the leader of the Brooklyn Dodgers, uh, the baseball team that eventually uh, signs Jackie Robinson uh, and brings him to, to Montreal uh, in the minor leagues, then eventually to, uh, eventually to, the, to the major league team. Uh, Ricky is kind of a, a central figure in uh, this climate and sort of opening things up and, and his, his role in kind of transforming baseball here is central. Our fifth term is obviously Jackie Robinson. So Robinson, of course, uh, for, for us, comes to the forefront in 1947 when he joins uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers uh, baseball team that April. However, Robinson, of course, had been a, a fascinating sort of individual in the years leading up to this. Uh, from his, his youth uh, in California to his time in sport at UCLA to his time in the US military, uh, and his time as well uh, in you know, the Negro Leagues. Uh, Robinson was a, an incredible athlete and a, a really fascinating character in terms of his personality, in terms of his approach to the game. So, so Robinson is brought forward, right, uh, in, in 47, uh, and will, of course, throughout the entirety of that season, uh, experience horrific discrimination uh, and really quite, you know, really, really horrid vitriol and rhetoric sort of throughout the year. And this is something that, of course, you know, places a highlight on the, the role that race has been playing in sport in the country for a long time anyway. Uh, it just sort of becomes a, a hyper-focused sort of element. Uh, and the process of integrating baseball really kind of begins in the aftermath of Robinson. Thank you very much.